The process map is a key tool and I think 99.9% .9 of the successful projects that I've seen have used it. It's located here in the measure phase and let's open that up. Uh, what you'll see is a fairly simple tool here. We start by entering the title and then we list our CTQs. CTQs are the things that define quality in the eyes of the customer. Okay. Next, we will break the, the uh, process down into logical blocks of activity. And usually I'll have more than one, so I'll click Add Step and Add Step. I can double click on the title and give it a name. I'm just going to call this one ABC. And over here, I'll list the key process output variables. Now, it's important to note these are not the key process outputs. They're the key process output variables. So if this uh, step produces clean parts, then the variable you're interested in is maybe how clean are they or uh, how, uh, how quickly we can do that, things like that, that are meters that we watch to see how well this step has gone. On the key process input variable side, we'll list the input knobs that can be adjusted to make these meters read differently. And some of these knobs we can adjust, usually things like time and temperature, in an industrial process. However, we also list knobs that insist on adjusting themselves, environmental factors we can't control. A good example of that is, is humidity or uh, maybe for a transactional project, uh, the legislative environment, uh, what kind of laws apply. Uh, it's important that you do things in sequence. First, name your process. Identify who the customer is. List the customer CTQs. Don't just make those up. Go ask. Break the, the process down into logical steps of activity. Uh, list the meters that you would watch to see if the steps had gone well and list the knobs that can be adjusted to make it uh, make the meters respond okay so let me import a file here so here's an example that has to do with baking bread and I've identified the customer as the retail bread buyer whoever comes into the store and buys it and uh, by questioning the customer, we've arrived at the idea that the CTQs are that it's got to taste good, that the weight has to be correct. You don't want to uh, give them more than they've paid for, and they want everything that they've paid for, so the weight has to be right. Texture and a nice color. And we've broken this down into mixing, kneading, rising, and out of sight down there, baking. So we've listed over here our key process output variables. How far does the weight deviate from ideal? You know, how good is the taste? And that's pretty qualitative. Uh, over here, we've listed the input variables that we think might be influential. And it's helpful to think of this as a compact form of the Ishikawa fishbone. So it's useful to think of man, machine, method, all of the things that go on that. So we've listed the cook skill, the type of flour, the recipe, the weighing system, mixing time, and on and on. You can see all of these input variables that we have listed. One of the main objectives of the, of the process map is to get a complete catalog of all the KPIVs and to get the CTQs. Those will be carried forward into the cause and effect matrix. Some of these will be carried forward to the FMEA, some to the action plan, and a few will actually end up in the control plan. 